first time I came here, looked like a hill been graded off. And it was a maybe a 50 acre, 100 acre patch from what I could see there. In a year's time, they went from that over here all the way around that way, and, and then they went this way a little. So mountaintop removal is a form of strip mining that came about in the mid-1980s. And strip mining is essentially any time you're moving the surface to get to an ore or a mineral, anything really. Anytime you're disturbing the surface to mine something, that's surface mining. And mountaintop removal is a form of that. It's a very, very large scale form of that. Because, you know, you look at the strip mines we had around here back in the 60s and 70s, it's a couple hundred acres here, a couple hundred acres there. These permits are three, four thousand acres large. You know, that's a huge swath of land that's just completely getting turned upside down. We can't look to the coal industry to change. They change as they need to. For example, coal companies employ a fraction of the number of people that were employed when my father worked in the mines, just a fraction. It's much more um, mechanized, computerized. The people who have the high paying jobs are educate, highly educated. They come here from somewhere else. Um, gone are the days when a, a person could drop out of high school and go into the mines and get a job. The whole culture of coal mining is a forced culture that was that was forced upon the people here. You know, before the coal companies came in, this, I mean, for the most part, the people that lived around here were sustenance farmers. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that people around here were living in coal company housing and having to spend their coal company money at the coal company store, which is tantamount to slavery. It's indentured servitude. And that happened up until the 60s and 70s in some places around here. It's something that's necessary. Not the stripping the mountain, but the coal. Now, if you stop to think, they ship that coal probably to China, but China don't have the resources to support them. Back years ago in the Miles days, I've read a little where they starved to death. They didn't have the food nor the stuff to keep them going. Now, we might not be getting the benefit, but they are millions of people over there depending on this. They depend on this. Coal has taken over, and we're totally dependent. If we remember, the Irish was totally dependent on potatoes. When that crop failed, look what happened. We're totally dependent on coal. And we're unrealistic, the news is unrealistic about coal can take us into the future. And so there's not an awareness here of the environmental crisis because to be aware of that, you'd have to say, well, we have to find an alternative to coal. And that scares people because the people with the better houses and that can buy things are the coal miners' families. We're not going to support coal, then what is the alternative employment that we're going to help you with? What can we do to help the people? And I think the attitude is let's just look at the ecology, let's, 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 let's study uh, the systems and say this is not allowed anymore or we're going to tax it to death, but we don't necessarily see the relief of those workers as a part of our agenda. Mm -hmm.